if you go to your Bible and you look up John 4, uh, verses 5 through 6, it, it talks about uh, a woman of Samari, and it talks about Jesus uh, watching this woman draw, went, going to Jacob's well, drawing water, and Jesus going up to her, and the woman of God telling Jesus that how is it her being a woman is Samari, and Jesus being a Jew, ask her for a drink, and it's an illustration of what, uh, how we feel as Christians when we feel like our past isn't good enough to come to God. Or we feel like, you know, we've done so many mistakes or just life hasn't been good. You know, we carry that on our on our back and and deep inside. We look at ourselves in the mirror and we think that we're failures and we think that God can't love us. And a lot of times you might try to hide your sin from God, but God knows your sin. And, and that's what my message is today is that God loves a sinner. And I preached about this the other uh, about back in March. And it, and it's true. God does love the sinner. You know, it, it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what you've done. But, you know, Jesus always loves the sinner. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, God, God, you know, God's got your back. God isn't tripping on what you've done in the past. God wants a person to come to accept him. He wants someone to repent. And he wants someone to get the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I have this Bible verse, John 4, John 5, the 24, 24 verse. It says, very, very, I say unto you, he that hear my word and believe on him that sent me have everlasting life. It shall not come in commendation that is passed from death unto life. And that's very powerful because... If you do believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you do believe in God and you and you accept him as your as and you accept him as your Lord and Savior and you're baptized in the name of Jesus, that explains how much he loves you unconditionally. And it doesn't matter what your past is or what you've done yesterday, today. But God loves you that much to tell you that, hey, my sons and daughters, I came into this world as the only perfect person. I died on a cross because I knew that uh, I knew that I love my children so much that I I I will take, you know, I will you know, I will be there for the alcoholic. I will be for some I will be there for someone that has been a prostitute. I will be there for someone that is homeless or someone that, you know, doesn't have a family or or maybe you grew up and maybe you got rejected. God was there for the re for the for the rejection for for an outcast, you know, and God does love us enough to know that he does die. He did die on the cross and he shed his blood for us. And that's what that's what that's what Jacob's well represents. It represents a woman of God that had many husbands and God knew about it. But at the same time, he still gave her an opportunity to receive the Holy Spirit. And he still gave her an opportunity to receive God. And, you know, how you do it. And, and this is what my my point is that God remember that God loves you. Jeremiah 31, the third verse says the Lord appeared unto us into the past saying that if I have loved you with the everlasting love and I have drawn you with an unfailing kindness, you know, God's love is, 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 is unconditional and his kindness is unconditional and God doesn't hate sin. Don't get me wrong, but he always loves a sinner. He always loves it when somebody does repent. And then my second topic, is, my second point is we all fall you know, just like the woman fell, she knew about her sin. She tried to fight, fight her past from God, but God knew her past. God didn't. God knew she had more than one husband. God explained to her why, if if she knew who, if she knew that that was God, and if she knew what he what he is gonna give her for free, if she knew about the about his unforgivable forgiveness and knew about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then she would have known that. That's her father. She would have known that, hey, you know what, God? I can't lie to you. I can't run to you because a lot of us, we run from it. We run from our past. We we try to we try to bring uh you know accommodation on ourselves because the world judges us. The Lord let the world will tell you your past. But God forgets your past. He says, We all fall. Romans 3:23 says, 
For all have sinned and all fall short for the glory of God. We all fall for the short of glory of God. You know, there's not one person that has not sinned, not sinned all the time. Believe me, this is not this is not a perfect walk. I'm telling you, it, it, it can be very frustrating. And, you know, third point is the world doesn't care about you. It, it doesn't love you. It has nothing to give to you. You know, relationships only last for a season. Alcohol and drugs only last just for a day. You know what I'm saying? Money is only temporary because eventually it runs out. You know what I'm saying? Cars break down. Homes catch on fire. People lose jobs. People can one day come home and not have anything left in their bank account because, you know what I'm saying, they they probably, you know, haven't been paying their taxes or probably behind on their bills. And maybe, you know, their landlord is going to kick them out. You know, those things happen. You know, and the world doesn't care for you. You know, you think your best friend is your best friend. You think your family member loves you. You think that your wife and your kids are going to have your back. And then you wake up Monday morning knowing that you just lost everything. That that wife of yours or husband left you for someone else. Left you heartbroken and thinking, and you thought that person was your world. You feel me? It says, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak, thing, the weak things of the world to shame the strong. You know, that's what I love about Jesus. You know, he doesn't look at... He doesn't look at my background. He doesn't worry about what other people are thinking. He's he he cares about what he cares about what I you know God loves me. You know, he's not worrying about the what the world thinks of us. I'm talking about I'm talking to the people that are watching this video. I'm talking about someone that is feeling rejected and feeling in emptiness. God God loves you. He ain't caring about what the world thinks of you. He's only you know, he's telling you you should only care what I think of you. You know, you should see what what God's love, God's love, you should just see the love of God and you should just look into that man's eyes and know that he loves you unconditionally. He loves you better than what the world loved you. He loved you better than what your husband loves you. He loves you more than what your parents love you. He loves you more than what your job than what your job loves you. You feel me? And then it says that your past has been erased. Sick. Get Corinthians, the fifth chapter, the 17 verse says, Therefore, if anyone is sin in Christ, he is a new creation, and the old has passed away, and the behold, the new has come. You know, uh, God, you know, God's love is unconditional. You know, when you come to the Holy Spirit, you are new. You know what I'm saying? Your past has been erased. There's no reason for you to bring up something that happened 20 years ago, or there's no reason to allow someone from your past to bring up your past and try to bring you, you know, combination, you know, hurt, you know, traumatize you or just keep picking at you and then wanting you to dwell on it. You know, there's a lot of negative people that do that. And the gift of God is free. Ephesians uh, verse 7 through 8. I think I wrote that down. For the grace you are saved through faith. And that knowing yourselves, for this the gift of God. The gift of the Holy Spirit is free. And, it, and it's here for you today if you want it. Um, you know, I, I'm just tired, exhausted. But I know that I have to still go to the feet of Jesus. You know, I'm, you know, just dealing with my own problems and dealing with my own life. But I know that I know the life that God has given me is is there, and know that the gift of the Holy Spirit is right there, and that's what I'm speaking to someone today. You know, if you're in a place where you just don't know what to do or where to turn to, you know, turn to Jesus today, and that's the simple message.